apps drive another nail into the cable industry's coffin, Airbnb acquires Vamo to help book trips, Uber's new in-car magazine hits New York, and more. It's Friday, September 11th, and this is Crunch Report. Earlier this week at a not very well attended and barely talked about Apple event, Blink and you miss it, right? CEO Tim Cook explained how apps were coming to the Apple TV's big screen, and not a moment too soon. A report from Flurry from yesterday said that for the first time ever, the time that U.S. consumers spent inside mobile apps was more than the time they spent watching TV. More people than ever are cutting the cord, not buying into TV packages with channels that they just don't want, or being distracted by other options in app form. According to Flurry's data, the average U.S. consumer is now spending 198 minutes per day inside apps, compared to 168 minutes on TV. Those numbers don't include time spent inside the mobile browser, although it's technically an app too. I use Chrome. If you included browsers on mobile devices, the number goes up to 220 minutes, or 3 hours 40 minutes per day. It is a little tough to wade through these numbers, though, when you consider a lot of people, certainly me, are in various apps while we're watching TV at the same time because we have zero attention spans. It is an executive exodus at Yahoo. We've learned that Ramses Martinez, the interim chief information security officer at Yahoo for the last month, left the company in August for a security role at Apple. Now, Kathy Savitt, the company's CMO, chief marketing officer, and head of its media unit, will leave the company to join STX Entertainment. That's a film studio that was started last year. Yahoo says it's currently looking for a permanent head of security, which is probably a pretty important position since it covers things like corporate incident response policy and risk analysis process and threat matrix and standards, creating and managing the company's global incident response program, working with law enforcement during security incidents and investigations, and founding and managing the company's bug bounty program. Under CEO Marissa Meyer, Yahoo has been in the middle of its big turnaround plan to boost revenues and market share for what seems like kind of forever now. Other recent departures from Yahoo, Scott Burke, former senior vice president of advertising data platforms, and Don Airy, media executive who had been leading Yahoo's European business. Airbnb is acquiring Vamo and shutting it down. Vamo was a service that helps people who are booking more complex types of vacations, maybe something with multiple stops, needing more airline tickets, offering price comparison and transit options between cities, that sort of thing, which is a great idea, and it sucks that it's going away, but it does make sense for Airbnb, since if I want to use Airbnb to stay in someone's apartment in Paris, maybe that's part of a bigger trip I'm taking, which of course requires booking travel. Vamo previously raised $1.6 million in venture capital. As for Airbnb, it's doing quite well. The company said it hosted more than 17 million guests over the summer alone. Jet.com launched just last month, going up against Amazon with the promise of lower prices for goods. According to new data by Channel Advisor, Channel Advisor helps merchants sell their products in various marketplaces, Jet is already the number four marketplace in terms of sales. That's huge. It's bigger than Sears. It's bigger than Best Buy. It's bigger than New Egg, Tesco, others. Channel Advisor says that its sellers have already seen tens of thousands of unique customers buying on Jet since its public launch and are seeing a 23% repeat buyer rate. That's quite high. To compare, eBay had a 17% buyer rate during the same period. Amazon had an 11% repeat buyer rate. So early users seem to really like the Jet experience. Although it doesn't appear to be at the expense of Amazon or eBay sales, both companies' purchase rates seem consistent. Uber, pretty confident company. Confident to the point that it assumes you don't get car sick when you're reading in the car. Starting this week in New York City, Uber's new in-car magazine called Arriving Now will greet you in the back seats. In a blog post about the new publication, Uber says the goal is to offer pro tips and hotspots and exclusive details about upcoming promotions. Seems a little old school to me. I mean, airplane magazines are nice and all, but now that everybody has the internet in their pocket, do we really need an Uber magazine? Maybe for when your battery dies and you still can't bring yourself to look out the window at the world. That is the report for today and the week, short week. I'm Sarah Lane. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. Have a good one. We'll see you Monday.